Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Dive Magazine. This video is sponsored by scuba.com and this week I was I was thinking about what to write about and some of the questions that I get asked in the comments frequently and well, obviously you know what idea I came up with because you clicked on the video, but I noticed that on a lot of channels they have a list of three things or five things that you should buy first when you get into scuba diving. But I don't deal in top threes or top fives, I deal in top tens and I'm going to rank them in order of what you should invest in first, second and third. So let's start off the list and what's the most important thing to invest in first of all. Your dive mask. It's really a no brainer. It's the bit that touches your face. And I don't think there's a professional scuba diver out there who will recommend anything other than a mask as your very first purchase. If you invest in the right mask, then you only need one throughout your entire diving career. The only reasons why you might need to change your diving mask is if you suddenly need prescription lenses in later life and your mask that you originally invested in doesn't fit those lenses, you for whatever reason decide to become a free diver and need a low volume mask, or a fancier dive mask is released and you just have to own it. Take a little time when you're buying a dive mask because you want to get it right the first time because it could be your one and only mask. Don't just go for looks and style. The mask has to fit you. Otherwise, you're just going to have a miserable time with a bit of water in your mask at all times. You can certainly buy a mask before you sign up for a course. Uh, it's not unusual for students to either turn up with their own mask or to actually buy a mask on their course because the instructor is going to show them how to prepare it and which mask suits them best. Most divers will buy their own mask soon after their first course and it's quite unusual for a diver not to have a mask by their second course. It's usually quite an early purchase. Rental things are fine, but there are so many more awesome designs out there. And 90% of the time, rental fins have those rubbish rubber fin straps on the back of them. Most fins today, if you're buying your own fins, are great all-rounders. Some excel in certain ways or they have special party tricks, but as long as they're open heel and you have a pair of boots that they fit, which I suppose is an extra cost, I'm afraid, but any fin design is going to get you where you need to go. Less likely for a student to turn up with their own fins on an introductory course, um, more likely their second course. So this is after your first cert card, somewhere like around dive 10, probably divers start thinking, I need my own pair of fins. Again, most divers invest in their fins after that introductory course and they start going diving on their own. That's when they start to invest in their own fins. Fins don't take up a great amount of space in the wardrobe and they're a great way to personalize your gear and stand out on the dive site. So yeah, it's definitely worth getting your own pair of fins. A safety device that every scuba diver should have at least one on their person whenever they're in the water every scuba diver should have their own dive knife. It doesn't need to be some giant Rambo knife like in the old Bond movies. Uh, a lot of dive knives today are quite short with a blunt tip. Uh, cutting hooks as well, uh, or Z knives, these are particularly popular today because they're really nice and compact and they're effective for what most scuba divers need to cut through and that's either going to be fishing line or webbing. Uh, we don't fight enemy scuba divers anymore and unless I'm planning on cutting through something substantial on a dive I'll carry this short dive knife and a line cutter and that's about it. Uh, both can cut through pretty substantial lines and they're easy to replace. Start off small, something that you can mount in a variety of places uh, or just thread onto a strap on your dive computer or your BCD. Once you start diving, you should really bring at least one, probably two cutting devices with you. So at least one, whether it be a Z knife as a line cutter or just a small blunt tip, um, that's a good 
early day investment, uh, probably after your introductory course. This is the first big investment for your diving equipment. Your dive computer is all about safety and if you keep renting different dive computers around the world at different dive sites, you're going to spend all of your time just learning how each of them work and what that beeping actually means. When you have your own dive computer, you know how it works. You know how to change the settings yourself and which each of the little symbols and beeps mean. So they're a really great investment above the other main three. So that's your dive computer, your regulators and your BCD. I'd put dive computer first. It's rare that dive students turn up with their dive computer on their very first lesson. But I wouldn't think it odd if a new student turned up with their own dive computer. If you really want to get invested in scuba diving, then by all means get your own dive computer. But most divers wait until they get their first cert card to then invest. Uh, it's just another one of those things it doesn't take up a particularly large amount of space. There are plenty of cheap models out there today that do everything that most scuba divers will ever need so a lot of the budget computers are perfectly fine for most of your diving career after your introductory course i'd be investing in a dive computer wetsuits and dry suits are tricky because it depends where you're going to go diving frequently and how frequently you're going you basically you don't want a seven mil wetsuit hanging up in your wardrobe that's only been wet twice um, that being said i'd always rather wear my own wetsuit than a rental suit people will always deny it but they do pee in rental suits and they may not always wash them quite as thoroughly as required it really depends on where and when you go diving but if you want like something to cover all bases, then a three mil shorty is good for diving in warmer waters. So if you're diving in the tropics in nice uh, sort of summertime, uh, anywhere where like a rash vest isn't enough. A five mil full suit is good for more temperate waters. It's the real Goldilocks, a five mil full length steamer. Um, and if you plan to go diving in cold waters, most divers here in the UK especially uh, just go straight to dry suits. So a three mil shorty, a five mil full suit and a dry suit, it pretty much covers all bases. Those three will give you a really good range of temperatures. When to invest? Depends on how much you plan to dive a certain temperature range. If you're only going to dive a handful of times, then I'd just rent. If you want to check out cold water diving, you don't know whether it's for you, just rent uh, because you don't want to invest in something that, yeah, you're only going to use once or twice. Um, if you can't go to these glamorous Maldives and nice warm places, then yeah, maybe not a shorty because what's the point and if you don't dive it, unless it is only the finest of temperatures when you only need a rash vest then why would you get a wetsuit that you're never going to need renting isn't the most glamorous but if you plan on diving more than one trip i'd probably buy my own wetsuit rental suits are built to be tough so they're not a great representation of what a wetsuit can actually feel like uh, and fit as well. They're built to be quite spartan so that they can fit a wide range of clients. Uh, whereas if you get your own wetsuit, neoprene is much more flexible. It's got a more sensible cut. Uh, so it's just going to be so much more comfortable. Scuba.com is your one-stop shop to find all of the top scuba diving brands from the classic big brands like Aqualung, Atomic, Cressy Mares, Scuba Pro, as well as new and exciting brands. As well as having their online dive store that offers free shipping and a pressure-free fit guarantee, where if your suit doesn't fit you quite right, then Scuba.com will send you the next size and collect the wrong one free of charge. But yes, Scuba.com is far more than just a 
website full of shiny new diving equipment. They also have two dive shops, one near Newport Beach in California and the other on West 17th Street in Manhattan. Here you can try on and buy diving equipment and scuba.com also teaches scuba diving classes. They run guided scuba diving tours, they service diving equipment and they have the Pacific Coast Dive Club if you want to join up and get some diving in. If you're in the market for some new scuba diving equipment, then head over to scuba.com. It's a really easy website to remember. Uh, it's literally scuba.com or you can click on this link up here or there's gonna be the same one down in the description underneath this video. Now we get into the really fun stuff. Your regulators are a great investment because again, rental equipment is built to be cheap and tough. So they don't always breathe that fantastic. Regulators, however, they are a consideration because regulators are one of the few bits of diving equipment that require regular servicing. So you either need to dive them enough to warrant the servicing costs or you just kind of leave them in the cupboard and then only get them serviced right before a trip. It's kind of rare for divers to have their own regulators by their second course, uh, but most certainly they have them their own regulators by the time they go to do their rescue course. Some divers might have it before their second. Uh, again, it just kind of depends how, how into your diving you are. Similar to fins, most regulators are strong all-rounders, uh, so they're going to do a good range of diving conditions, while some may specialise for either lightweight travel or tough cold water diving. It's, it's a bit of a spectrum. Most of the regulators are going to be in the middle, that Goldilocks that do a little bit of everything, uh, but you do get the ultra lightweight, which only do warm water, and the really tough heavyweight that do cold water. If you know that you're only ever going to travel to go scuba diving in really warm places, or you do plan to go diving at home in colder waters, you can kind of plan which style of regulator to buy, whether you want to specialize or just kind of get an all rounder. Just be sure that you can service them easily wherever you are. Have a look for local dealers and local service centers. Your BCD. Uh, I leave BCDs quite late in the list and I probably could have pushed them a bit further back to be honest because I don't think too much about BCDs and they don't affect my diving that much. As long as I can strap a cylinder to my back and I don't fall out of it, I don't think too much to my BCD. But I do need one and I do own quite a few. BCDs tend to require less servicing costs than a set of regulators, so it's more that upfront cost that you're paying for, less so the lifetime costs. And when you own your own BCD, you know that you're taking scuba diving a bit more seriously. Again, look at the type of scuba diver that you plan to be so that you don't need to buy a second BCD because the first one isn't suitable for the new style of diving that you're doing. More and more divers are jumping straight to back plates, but if you're sticking to single cylinders, a recreational BCD will do just fine. Somewhere between 25 to 50 dives, most divers tend to rent for a while because a BCD is a pretty bulky piece of equipment, but around 25 to 50 dives, around rescue, you should really start to have your own BCD. Back to the more reasonable small bits of equipment and we have your dive torch. Uh, it's not unusual to find some dark corners while scuba diving and if you're diving in a shipwreck, it's nice to have a torch to switch on as soon as you enter whilst your eyes are still adjusting to the darkness so you can actually see around, you're not gonna bump into something straight away. Torches are also a useful rescue signal to communicate um, but also to communicate whilst you're in the water to your buddy because you can reach out and get their attention and they're another area where rental equipment is just rubbish i've seen brighter lights in an easy bake oven on some rental torches so it's nice to have your own with a bit of oomph behind it a dive torch is handy to carry on you uh, especially on a night dive for obvious reasons. Uh, dive torches are one of those things that a diver 
can go their entire career and never actually need if you don't go night diving, you don't go in overhead environments, well, you may not ever need a torch. Um, but if you have one, then of course you have it when and if you need it. It's one of my every dive carry items that comes with me on every single dive, even if I may not need it. Lead is quite boring, uh, but we cannot go scuba diving without it. Uh, it takes a while before you need to buy your own lead. And if you're traveling, then you may never need to buy your own lead. If you find yourself on an aeroplane to go scuba diving, then there's absolutely no reason to bring your own lead. Lead is usually included in most diving packages, uh, along with your cylinders, and there's plenty on the back of a dive boat and the only thing that lead is gonna do in your suitcase is just make it really hard to pack any kind of clothing. Uh, if you dive at home with your buddies and not on a training course with a dive center or a school or anything, uh, then you are going to need your own lead weights or you're just gonna be surface covered because you cannot sink. But lead weights, they can be useful to have around the house from time to time. Uh, for, with DIY, you never know when you might need a, a really heavy brick for some DIY or something. Uh, I mean, I use mine for much more than just scuba diving. Um, so yeah, if you do plan on diving at home, then yes, you are gonna to need to invest in your own lead. When? It just depends. You can rent lead, but it's just a pain going backwards and forwards to the dive center. Um, and the earlier you invest in lead, because the price of lead is constantly increasing, uh, the sooner rather than later. When should you buy your own cylinder? Your dive cylinder is another big investment that needs regular servicing. Again, this one is limited to divers who dive at home. Your cylinder is included in your dive package on normal holidays, but diving at home, it soon becomes cost effective to own your own cylinders instead of renting them because you still pay for the fills wherever you are. Uh, so, uh, when you have your own cylinders, you don't have to rush around getting them back to the dive center so you don't end up paying for another day's rent. The downsides to owning your own cylinders are the cost of potential damage. If you chip the paint on a steel cylinder, you should really get it topped up to prevent rust from forming. If it's a rental cylinder, it's kind of the dive center's problem. Uh, when you should invest in your own cylinder, mainly comes down to convenience. How many times and how much does it take to collect and drop off the cylinders? Uh, for a lot of divers, owning their own cylinder isn't particularly important. Um, probably after rescue, um, like 50, 75 dives. Um, it, it, yeah, it depends how frequently you go scuba diving at home. Um, if it's not that often, then it's not really worth it. You can throw your DSMB and reel in there somewhere, uh, usually after your first or second course. Uh, and DSMB is an important piece of equipment, but I wanted to include lead and cylinders in my list as divers often ask when or if they should invest in their own lead and cylinders. Um, if you have a different order for investing in dive equipment, uh, by all means, let us know down in the comments below which order you would invest in stuff, along with any regrets you may have. I mean, have you invested in any dive gear and then later regretted it? Uh, I certainly have a ton that I don't dive anymore. Uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but now, hmm. Um, remember to head over to scuba.com if you do need to buy any new dive equipment and head over to scubadivemag.com if you want to check out our website. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.